Hi, it's Camille Gaines here with FinancialWoman.com and I'm going to go out just on a little bit of a limb here and this is not something that I would normally write about or really talk that much about but um, I want to I want to tell tell you this for the for the people that are women that are interested in learning a little bit more about the stock market um, in particular and what I was doing today, it's a Saturday, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a nerd, I will confess, but I have been meaning to take a really good look at weekly stock charts from just the last few months because there's been so much volatility in the stock market and also because uh, we're well, well extended into this bear, uh, excuse me, bull market that's had really good returns the last few years. Of course, uh, 2015 was not, certainly not much happened in the stock market. You may have seen my video about the summary of what happened in the markets in 2015. But the couple years prior to that um, had good moves and we've been in a bull market now, which means the market's been going up really since the 2009 correction ended. And there have been a, a few bumps in the road, but I don't know what's that sort of six years seven years and so um, so I wanted to share it with you I'm I was completely in the moment of this and I just thought I'm going to pop a quick video for anybody that might be interested in seeing this I like this so just so you know you don't have to know that much about it and I want to say the charts are compliments of Schwab I'm not sure what the rules are about sharing their charts so thank you Schwab um, and this chart is called a weekly chart and these little bars represent a week in the stock market okay and don't worry about this other stuff right now the only thing I would say is this one is volume and it means the number it's just the volume that people were were trading this okay so again very layman's terms here um, I'm just going to show you and, and use my simple language <laughs> To tell you about it and so the so these bars so a green bar means the market was up that week overall and a red bar means it was down overall that week and see that little flag on the left there on that red bar that means that's where it's the market opened that week so that would be like Monday morning and this is where it closed on Friday afternoon and then same thing every week and these are called bar charts this is a bar chart because it's posted as bars. It's my favorite type. There are two other major types. Really, I won't even go into that. So, because what I want to show you on this chart is simply, do you see this little yellow line right here that's going like that? And it moves with the stock market going up. See how it goes up along there with the stock market? see as it's gone up here we go just to get make it all give you some perspective this is I think it's 2011 yep 2011 where we had a little bump in the road there following that 2009 correction but look at that so just to give you perspective here we are you know cruising along 2007 here's the correction 2008 and so then we have, have just come all the way cruising back up past all-time market highs and so I was curious this yellow line um, is the 200 day moving average so 200 day moving average I'll say that slower <laughs> this red line is the 100 day moving average I couldn't begin to explain all the math behind those numbers but it has something to do with I think it's averaging the last 200 days or the last 100 days um, together to form these lines and that is what it is but that's there's a more sophisticated version of that all I know and all I really feel like I need to know is that a lot of people including professional you know really high level uh, technicians and wealth managers and just a lot of people in the market that manage wealth for people pay attention to this yellow line and this red line and those are there are shorter time frames but the the 100 day and the 200 day are really long time frames so it's not like something day traders would use it's something that long-term investors would use 
And so when that little red line crosses underneath that yellow line, like it did, see right there? Move that little dividend. I can't move that little dividend out of the way, but see how it crossed right there? That means that it's it's a big what's called a technical move. That 200 day, that 100 day crossed underneath that 200 day. See that little line there? And again, I apologize if I did this on a regular basis for you, I would have a really cool pointer and stuff. But I just wanted to show this for those that are interested. So it crossed underneath there. And that's the 100 day moving average. And am I saying that when that happens, well, number one, I don't give investment advice. I'm not a registered investment advisor. I am an accredited financial counselor and I've been investing for over 30 years. So that's my background uh, and my credentials. So and I'm showing you what I am doing on a Saturday, looking at this because I was curious about it. And so I'd like for you to be curious about investing as well. So that crossed underneath there, and that tells me, hmm, that's I'm going to pay attention to this. Would this be something that says I'm, I should sell out of the stock market entirely? Hmm, maybe for some people, some people do. For other people, it's just a caution. For other people, especially a lot of a lot of investment advisors. Uh, point out that when you move in and out of the market, you pay taxes, you pay more taxes, and you have more expenses in terms of trading and expenses. So some people do, some people don't. But if nothing else, it's it's a it's a flag. It's a flag to say pay attention, and it's probably a time that you wouldn't want to, you know, t get a chunk of money and go. You know what? I've I've never invested in the stock market. I'm going to go invest all my money in the stock market right now and put it all in there. It might go up from here. It might double over the next year, five, not likely, but over the next five years. Um, it might, you know, there have been extended periods of time where it went straight up. But what I would say is this is the time, this signals caution. And what I wanted to look at, so now that I've shown you that, what I really wanted to look at though was I like to compare to prior corrections. So what I did is I pulled up a chart let me get it so they're the same time frame and they look the same to say, you know what, what happened? How, how did this look in 2007? Here it is, 2000, late 2007 to 2008. So this, this is showing you October 2005, Halloween day, to February 2008. And then over here we have May 2014 to January 4th, 2016. And I wanted to have about the same time period so we could kind of compare. And I said, okay, well, let me see here. Um, let me see, I'm gonna change this a little bit. So it's a little bit longer and it's more the same. I've been playing with these quite a lot. There, I think that looks closer. So see how this crossed under the 100 day moving average. Now, the 100 day moving average, that red line there, it crossed under right there, see? And so here it is crossing under right here. Does it cross under at times other than the beginning of big bear markets or big corrections, down moves, in other words, in the stock market? Occasionally, not very often though. Um, and so that's all I really wanted to show you. The, the only other thing that makes me kind of feel like mm, maybe this time it's a little bit different or which is, a, I'm laughing because that's a famous line in the investing world, um, is that see how down here the volume is a little bit calmer than it was over here. I mean, it's, sorry, opposite. It's a little bit calmer now than it was over here. See over here, this up and down, there's just so much movement over here, high, high volume levels, and over here, we don't have as high volume, and that signals just not quite as much panic, not quite as much what's referred to as churning, 
where there's just frantic trading in and out, in and out, driving up that volume. And so that's all I wanted to show you today other than I don't want to leave you freaked out or anything. I just want to, I want to make you aware, you know, and a really great thing to say, um, maybe if you work with a financial advisor, a good, uh, you know, think of, of the um, level of confidence that you have in knowing this and being able to say something like, well, what do you think about the stock market? Because it's been going up for seven years. We've been in a strong bull market for seven years. Are you concerned about it? And it's it's because you now know that. Maybe you were aware of it. Maybe you were aware of some aspect of that. You probably are because you probably check your investment accounts. But I'm just trying to put some framework around it so you you can take that what you've noticed about your investment accounts and feel yeah, okay, I get it. I know, I know that that's, you know, that's happened. So, and I also just want to quickly, quickly, this is 2000, this is the one that is 2008 over here. So, see how right here, that red line, the 100-day moving average, it kind of crossed under the yellow, but look, see it barely crossed under, and then it came right back up. It kind of bounced right back up. Well, that didn't happen over here in 2016. This was back in the fall of 2016. See when it crossed under? That didn't happen. Now, let's look at it and see, well, when did it cross? What are, when are other times it crossed? Well, look at that. It kind of crossed there, but yeah, not really. It kind of just touched it. And so maybe that's a signal that it was the market was getting a little bit antsy, you know. And then look right here. It crossed under, over, under, over. But it didn't do a hard cross down like it's done here. See? It stayed below. So back here when it crossed down, it kind of came back up. And this is, is called a base. I won't go into a lot of detail on that on this video. So but see how nicely um, here in this uptrend, that red line made a firm, firm cross up. It stayed up. And it look how far apart it was from that yellow line. And that's indicating a really strong upward move. And so this is going back, this is the correction back in the early 2000s, which you, some of you might remember was the tech bubble. And so that's that's all I wanted to show you. And look at that. That's 2000, the 2008 correction. And um, let's see if I can do this. There we go. So here we go. And here, here it is. The long term from the correction back in 2007, 2008. And then notice that red line and the yellow line. We'll do that. That'll show it nicely. Can't. Looks like I can't make them both bright. Um, but notice how they are in relationship to each other and how in this time frame from about 2000, this is 2012 in here. We had that little correction in 2011 when it kind of bounced around. And then see how nicely the red line stayed above the yellow line all this time. Look at that. See how nice and clean that is? And that is from, that red line has been above that yellow line since this crossover back here in 2011. And it stayed up there all this time. And so that's what I wanted to show you. And I hope this was informative. Um, this is, just so you know, I, and I should have given you a little overview at the beginning. I'll have to do another video on that. Down at the bottom, this is the time frame, the months and the years. This is the volume. And this is the, the measurements. You know, this is these are the levels that are used to measure the stock market moves. And this, very important, which you probably know if you've read any of my information, my blogs, my articles, watched any of my videos, 
SPY is what we're looking at, and SPY is an index that represents the stock market as a whole. You've probably heard of it before. It's called the Standard & Poor's 500, and SPY is the symbol for Standard & Poor's 500. And that's what I wanted to show you in this video. So just to recap, we've looked at the stock market move and the nice strong up move that it's had since 2009 after we had that large market correction. And one of the ways that technicians measure, um, make decisions about the market, I should say, not just technicians but investors, people, is by the the moving averages, the longer term moving averages are the 100 day, which was that red line, the 200 day, which was that yellow line, and when the market is moving up strong, that red line is above the yellow line. And at the beginning of market corrections, the yellow line, the red line crosses under or the yellow line crosses up over the red line. And then it, it might come right back up and mo keep moving up. We don't know, we don't know that. But corrections begin with this and they may or may not, it may or may not stabilize and cross back up over. It's been a long time since it has been, the red line <laughs> has been over the yellow line to use my simple lingo here. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Come see me at financialwoman.com and if you'd like to develop better money habits, get more comfortable with your money, I've got some a really nice tool on there to get you started. It's my free gift and make sure that you grab that and I'll see you at financialwoman.com. Thank you.